I'm going to shut the laundry door so it doesn't distract you with more awesome laundry machines. Speaking of that, going into the laundry room made me feel very happy. Unbelievably. Ah, because the smell of fresh, clean laundry just is awesome, right? It just brings about this feeling of, uh, you know, summertime, whatever. I don't know what, what it reminds me of, but it doesn't matter. That's the beauty of classical conditioning, right? So this is what we're talking about. First off, Pavlov did not do anything with a bell. If you repeat the story about Pavlov's bells to someone, I will pop out of the wall and just poof, slap you upside the head. Pavlov's dogs and a bell, poof, all right? It wasn't a bell. It was a metronome. Um, or, oh yes, like I was saying, that laundry room elicits emotions. Emotions are nothing more than responses. Sometimes physiological, sometimes behavioral, sometimes with tears, sometimes with smiley faces, right? But they're emotions, they're actions, they're things we do. We may not be choosing to do them, they may be reflexive, Right? Because when we're talking about classical conditioning, we are talking about the modification of a reflex. So reflexes um, are not as static as what we thought they were prior to Pavlov. And some people still don't even get that. Uh, there's a lot of psychologists out there that don't get that. Conditioned stimuli. CSs. Those are the things that historically did not produce a reflex. Coffee cups don't produce reflexes in people. What else do I have? Oh, blank. Old, empty hard drives do not produce reflexes in people. Manila envelopes don't produce reflexes. And interestingly enough, all of these things I've shown you, all of them, are neutral stimuli until you pair them with something else that does evoke a reflex. Then they become conditional stimuli. Right? Some people say conditioned, myself. <laughs> um, anyway, so we've got this thing. Neutral stimulus. This thing's a neutral stimulus. The coffee cup is even a neutral stimulus. So this is neutral until I pair it with something. I could pair it with a, oh, I don't know. So let's, let's just do one. This is gonna be kind of fun, you ready? <sighs> neutral stimulus. <sighs> Unconditioned stimulus. <laughs> right. Now, we paired them once. That was a trace conditioning procedure, by the way. Um, so we paired them once. So now we have, it's no longer a neutral stimulus. Now it's a conditioned stimulus. So let's try it again. All right, we'll do it again. All right, and one more time. Oh, I, that's only four, but I'm getting sore. Yeah. <laughs> Did you catch it? The point is, is that when, oh, now I'm gonna flinch whenever whenever somebody shows a laptop size hard drive to me. All right. So when somebody does that to me, if I continue to do that, all right, and, and again, and again, all right, do that a bunch of times. Eventually, I'll just constantly flinch whenever I see one of these. Okay. Um, that's because this has taken on the power of that. <laughs> In other words, this predicts that an unconditioned stimulus is coming. That's how this works. When a neutral stimulus becomes predictive of an unconditioned stimulus, right? then, the, then the conditioned stimulus, the new CS, now that thing right, has a new quality to it. It elicits something out of you. All right? And what that thing is, is a response. If this elicits a response, then we say that the conditioned response is coming out. If that elicits a response, then we say the response is an unconditioned stimulus. Kind of cool, right? The flinching, right? So the flinching, the sneeze, whatever it is, in response to the conditioned stimulus is going to be a conditioned response. It doesn't matter if it's the same response. It doesn't matter if it's slightly different. It doesn't matter if it's the completely opposite. Compensatory conditioned responses. is As long as it, the response happens after this, then you know it's a conditioned response, right? <sighs> uh, because knowledge of the process doesn't influence the process. You have to go through the process. Right? Does that make sense? Just because I know that I can turn this into a conditioned stimulus doesn't mean that I, go, that I have to just tell myself, oh, become a conditioned stimulus. <laughs> it doesn't work. I have to repeatedly pair this with something that is an unconditioned stimulus, and then I'll get this response, right? Then I'll get that conditioned response that I want. This process is boom, way deep down in your brain, and you share it with almost every species out there. That's one of those beauties of science. That's one of those beauties of how nature works. Nature conserves. It hangs on to the things that work, gets rid of the things that don't. So, um, let's see. I'm trying to think what else. That's about it, really. Uh, so there's some classical conditioning for it. There's a ton more. I'll flip through this. Maybe I'll get another video up. Peace.
Talk to you soon. Cheers. Bye.